period of time, you have to be able to, to answer questions now. And I, you know, I'm, I'm one of these uh, people who, uh, there, there aren't many of us who can still justify for you the reasons that we went into Vietnam, however uh, screwed up the strategy got, whereas I don't think there were legitimate reasons for us to have taken this move into Iraq, again, with the situations, the, com the other situations in the region that were you a lot more... You opposed it publicly uh, uh, two years before you went in? I did, and, and, and on strategic grounds, that uh, the, uh, if, if you're going to work in this region, uh, the Arab-Israeli situation should be first order priority. We need to find Dennis Ross or, or someone of, 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 of that stature to come in and, and, and really aggressively attempt to bring a resolution of that situation. We need to address international terrorism. Uh, we created what I was calling at the time a strategic mousetrap by going into Iraq when we did. We have to fix that. That's the reality that we're dealing with. But again, the way to fix it is to work from the diplomatic into the military rather than the other way around. Your son Jimmy, 24, is a Marine in Iraq. You wore his combat boots throughout the entire campaign. Is it hard talking about this war knowing that your own son is over there? I have, you know, feelings as a father uh, that I have, you know, I have to separate from the policy issues because there are a lot of people who have loved ones there and, you know, so I, I think in terms of policy issues I can separate that. Very difficult personally, I have to admit. John Tester, let me show you what Major General J.D. Thurman, the senior commander of American Forces in Baghdad, said. Part of our problem is that we want this more than they do, talking about the Iraqis. That's a very powerful statement. Well, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> the, you know, if you go back to what, what uh, Senator Leck Webb said about diplomatic pressures, um, you know, I think that is, is just so right on the mark. It, it, it really is critically important that we uh, visit with our allies to develop, to develop a plan for the region and also keep our enemies uh, close on this thing because I think it's in everybody's best interest uh, to try to find some sort of resolution here. And I don't know if it's wanting it more than they. I think it's, it's knowing what we accomplish when we're done. That's, that's, part, that's part of what uh, is, is mysterious to me when I look at what's going on in Iraq right now. One of the things that happened the day after the election, Jim Webb, was uh, President Bush announced that Donald Rumsfeld was leaving, that Robert Gates was going to replace him as Secretary of Defense, and there's a photograph of Mr. Gates meeting with John Warner, the Chairman of the Armed Services Committee. Uh, would you like to be able to vote on Mr. Gates' confirmation? rather than have him confirmed before you're sworn in? I would, and I, that has been misinterpreted by, by some. I heard there was a column by Robert Novak saying that I have some personal animus toward Mr. Gates. I don't even know Mr. Gates. But if this is an individual that I'm going to be working with for the next two years, I would like to be able to ask my own questions and to examine uh, you know, his, his uh, qualifications, and I, I think that's sort of logical. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but certainly I would like to be able to, to sit down in this confirmation hearing and take a vote. Let me turn to the issue of congressional corruption. Uh, John Tester, here's a campaign ad that ran all across the state of Montana. Let's watch and come back and talk about it. Look around Montana and you'll see John Tester is catching on. He'll put an end to Senator Burns' kind of corruption and make the U.S. Senate look a little more like Montana. I'm John Tester and I approve this message. I approve the haircut, too. <laughs> Take away the haircut. <laughs> Let's talk about corruption. Uh, you talk about Senator Burns' kind of corruption. Right now, there are proposals before the incoming U.S. Senate, Senator-elect, which will talk about free meals and airplane rides and so forth. Two of the areas that some in the Senate, some Democrats, don't want to go near are establishing an office of public integrity and also Full disclosure for the so-called earmarks, a money that senators target for their home states. Are you in favor of a comprehensive reform package that would include the creation of an office of public integrity and deal with earmarks? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I will tell you that, that building the bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. is not something that I'm crazy about. So developing another office is uh, something I'd take a hard look at before we did it. I, I do think that we need to get a hold of the earmark situation and make sure that uh, they're, they're transparent, make sure that the people who are offering the earmarks, we know who they are. Uh, but, but really, transparency in government is the key here, Tim. 
when you talk about influence that uh, the K Street lobbyists have on the process, I think we can limit that. But ultimately, in the end, uh, you need to have people in Washington, D.C. who are honest, who, are, who can't be bought. And, uh, and we will come up with an ethics plan. We talked to Senator Reid about that, uh, that, that will uh, take care of some of the, the, the free meals and travel and all that stuff. I also hope that we, uh, we get something as far as, uh, as posting who the senators meet with uh, to the best of their ability. And I know that's, that's tough when it comes to staff uh, in offices this size, but, but the fact is is the people back home need to know who we're meeting with so that they have the opportunity to put their two bits in, uh, in too. When you talk about a representative government, it should be for everybody, not just the moneyed interest. And, and when we have a situation like's been back there the last couple years with, with and you know the names, I don't have to bring them up again, that, that have had the dealings with, with, with the lobbyists and, 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 and money transactions, I just don't, don't think it speaks well for public service at the local level, state level, and especially at the federal level. And we've got a lot of good people back there that do a lot of work sacrificing uh, family and a lot of other things. And we need to make sure that, that uh, ethics and honesty is a, is a foundation quality uh, for our government. One of the issues in your campaign was Senator Burns saying, I may have said some outrageous things, but I bring home the goods. I bring home the pork from Montana. And Senator Harry Reid, the Democrat, said, if you vote for John Tester, we're going to put him on the Appropriations Committee as soon as possible. Uh, that's where the pork is. That's where the earmarks are. But you didn't get on that committee. What happened? Well, I think that uh, Senator Reid did the best he could do, and, and I think that I don't think any of the freshmen got on that committee. Uh, I hope that uh, I will get on it as soon as possible. I've talked to Senator Reid about that, and I think it will happen. I'm very happy with the committees I got, I've, I've received uh, in the Senate, and, and uh, you know, I've, I've been in the process in state government for eight years. I can, I can deal with uh, with uh, issues of importance to Montanans and, uh, through the amendment process on the floor and, and we'll do that but I think part of what will enable me to do exactly what I talked about with amendments is transparency in government. You can't affect the process unless you know uh, what's transpiring on the floor at the time so there has to be transparency and opportunity for debate. So if you got on the Appropriations Committee you would want complete transparency for that committee? Absolutely, I think it's I think it's very important to be able to offer debate. What happens? Uh, offer to be, to be able to debate the issue. What happens when uh, earmarks are done at the late at night and there's not opportunity for total transparency? Is you get a lot of projects funded that are truly pork projects that shouldn't be funded, taking money away from good projects that should be. I want to ask you both about the economy, uh, Jim Webb. When you were running, you said I'm not just running about Iraq. I'm running about what I see happening to the economy in this country, to the divisions between rich and poor, uh, as a Jacksonian Democrat. And let me show you an op-ed piece that you wrote uh, on Wednesday for the Wall Street Journal and have both you and John Tester talk about it. The most important issue in politics today is our society's steady drift toward a class-based system, the likes of which we have not seen since the 19th century. America's top tier has grown infinitely richer and more removed over the last 25 years. It is not unfair to say that they are literally living in a different country. Few among them send their children to public schools. Fewer still send their loved ones to fight our wars. They own most of our stocks. The top 1% now takes in an astounding 16% of national income. This ever-widening divide is too often ignored or downplayed by its beneficiaries, a sense of entitlement has set in among elites, bordering on hubris. When I raised this issue with corporate leaders during the recent political campaign, I was met repeatedly with denials and from some, an overt lack of concern for those who are falling behind. A troubling arrogance is in the air among the nation's most fortunate. With this new Congress, American workers have a chance to be heard in ways that have eluded them for more than a decade. Nothing is more important for the health of our society than to grant them the validity of their concerns, and our government leaders have no greater duty than to confront the growing unfairness in this age of globalization. Very strong words. What do we do? Roll back I, tax cuts, roll back trade agreements. What do we do? No, I, I strongly believe that, that it's the most important country uh, uh, issue facing our country. Uh, we have corporate profits at an all-time high, wages, salary, and salaries at an all-time low as a percentage of our national wealth. And it's sort of a three-tiered problem, a very difficult problem. It's going to take years, years to break it down. The first is, what is fair trade in the, in the uh, age of globalization? Um, we can talk about free trade agreements, but when are, when are they not fair? China's the best example of that.